Hello esports fans and YouTube viewers, this is Image, and we're going to be continuing this set between CJ Entis and Eastro in the Shinhan Bank StarCraft Pro League. Um, this is set four of um, a maximum of five. Eastro is leading the set two to one, so CJ's representative has to win it. Playing for CJ is effort, and that's probably the best player they could have hoped to have in this situation. Um, not as if they have a choice in the matter. The lineups are set in advance. That's effort on the left. He's a Zerg player for CJ Entis, and his opponent representing Eastro is Sangho, a Protoss player. Um, and the reason I was saying that effort is the best player CJ could hope to have in this situation is because he is the hottest player around right now. And I don't mean that in the sense of he's so dreamy, but in his last 23 games, he's won 20 of them. He's been on fire across all of his matchups, and Sangho is going to really have to bring his A game to stop him. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Off we go. Um, as to whether Sangho can beat Effort, I mean, there's that sense in which, yeah, everything's possible, and it looks like we're going to be playing this game on um, New Medusa, and this, I think, is new New Medusa, the one where Zerg doesn't have the um, opportunity to build proxy hatcheries um, outside of the opposing natural expansion. I think that's really too bad that um, Kaspa rushed into making that um, second map change. I thought the proxy hatchery was neither an imbalanced or broken strategy, and it was pretty cool to watch made for some exciting play, and it was nice to see something that the Zerg could do later in the game to punish a fast-expanding Protoss. Um, so Sangho, the Protoss player, he's in the blue at the 6 o'clock position, whereas Effort, um, our Zerg player, is in yellow up toward the 10 o'clock. So Pylon's going down at the natural expansion. We're going to see some Forge fast expand. Not at all a surprise on this map. Um, two gating or one gate tech not so great on this map just because of the way the choke points are arranged and the fact that they're pretty wide chokes and there's no ramp to hold. In the meantime, however, video is a little bit glitchy, which is unfortunate. I was pulling this from um, Team Liquid's VODs, and I think typically they're really of a much higher quality than that. I couldn't quite tell what the timing on that spawning pool was but um, should be able to get a better idea of that, I guess, once it finishes, or from the timing of when that um, when that Overlord will pop. Um, I guess that was a 9 or over pool, so it's going to be some early Zergling pressure in any case, and a quick expansion as soon as Effort can clear that um, harassing probe out of there. Um, that probe's delayed that hatchery for a decent long while, and I guess could have gone at it for, for a bit longer. Um, so that was something pretty well done by um, by Sangho there, and um, accordingly two cannons going up before that um, nexus, so just in the absence of having been able to spot the Overlord timing on that, I'm going to assume that that was just a 9 pool into um, into expansion. So, Lings are on the move to chase down that scouting probe, and we'll see how long um, Sangho can keep it alive. For the moment, I don't think there's going to be anything much to see um, beyond the fact that um, Effort's taking his third at that mineral only, but um, that's really to be expected anyway. I don't think there's going to be any big surprise or immediate benefit to spotting the fact that that's going up. And this could be, again, sort of like we saw in set two of Much versus Hiva, um, an instance of that um, really popular three hatchery spire into five hatchery hydralisks build, um, which Effort is really good with. Um, I believe it was also on this map that he took um, Bisu to the limit, um, just barely losing out a game to um, to him in, an, in a pretty lengthy and, though I hate using the word in this way, epic macro battle. So that should be pretty um, 
indicative of um, Effort's abilities with that build. Aside from which, um, well, I mentioned that he had had that um, 20 and 3 street um, record in his last 23 games. The losses that he took, two of them were against Jadong in Zerg vs. Zerg, which is certainly nothing to be ashamed of, and the other one was a loss to Bisu vs. Protoss, so he's also only losing to the very best players around. And he's been beating a number of the very best players around, having taken a game off of Flash recently in another very good game. So, Effort is really on form, and it'll be interesting to see if Sango is going to be able to um, do much about it to secure a victory. Um, Sango, for his part, I've mostly seen him play against other Protoss. I don't know how to gauge his versus Zerg game. Um, his versus Protoss play, I don't think it's terribly impressive. He has knocked up a few wins against pretty good players, but it's been doing these kind of borderline cheese builds like Forgate Dragoon rushes, which seems to be the thing that he really loves to do. And there's that Spire going up for effort, so it'll be interesting to see if um, it continues along the lines of that 3-hatch Hydralisk, 3-hatch um, Spire into Scourge into 5-hatch Hydralisks or whether he does some sort of lurkerling attack like Hiva did in game 2 I think um, Effort is going to stick to the standard um, the standard build there Hiva is probably the more creative player of the two but um, there are two more hatcheries going down and I imagine that the Hydralisk den will soon follow so standard play from both so far as um, on the other side of the map, Songho is getting some tech up. He'll have that first Corsair out to scout pretty shortly. And oh good, that uh, spectator was not asleep. I can never understand why I see start people at these StarCraft matches who have fallen asleep. I, okay, obviously I'm commentating on it. I don't think it's all that boring, but I don't think it's all that boring in general. So I always find myself kind of surprised when I see sleeping spectators at, uh, at these matches. And the, uh, the camera people love to zoom in on them for some reason. Anyway, the Corsairs are out, and the Scourge should be following along shortly, so there's going to be a bit of a battle for air superiority. Sangho is also adding his gates. There's a small ground army as well, just pushing out and trying to clear those um, spotting wings from outside of the natural. Um, no immediate aggression yet, but Templar tech is up, and Sangho could opt for that plus one um, speedlot Archon rush. The forge is spinning, so plus one is on the way. Zealot speed's probably upgrading, or will be soon. And it'll definitely be interesting to see whether um, he'll be able to get that to work if that's indeed what he's going for. Unlike, say, much in the previous game in the um, previous game in the series set two, assuming anyway that that was what much was going for. But I think that um, it's kind of hard to tell, and that Hiva preempted it. In the meantime. Small force on the go, just two zealots, a goon, and an archon, so I'm a little bit uncertain as to what um, Sango thinks he can accomplish with that, and sucks to be that dragoon.